today I'm going to talk about the quick selection and magic wand tools. They are the fourth button down in the toolbar. There you can see the shortcut is W. So I'll switch to that. And if you hold down on there, you can see that the magic wand tool is right below it. Also W, so hit Shift W to go between them. Or hold down the Alt key and click. First I'll start off with the quick selection tool. The basic function of the quick selection tool is it selects based on color and contrast with the brush shape. It also detects edges, which is pretty handy. And I'll just increase the size here with the right bracket key. I'm working on an image here from my backyard in the uh, frozen wastelands of northern Minnesota. In this kind of image you can see that there's a lot of the same kind of color in the snow. And so if you click and select it'll find similar regions and just automatically pop out to those boundaries. But you can see it's certainly not perfect as it did the bottom of these spruce trees here and it didn't go into this snowy zone back here so if I just clicked in there it'll pop open into another region and then if I wanted the sky it is certainly quick uh, accuracy on the other hand not so great one quick mention about this tool in the options bar up here you've got new selection add to selection and subtract from selection like any of the other selection tools if you're on new selection and I'll just get rid of the selection I had and I'm selecting you can see that it automatically switches to the add selection which is pretty handy instead of having to hold down the shift key every time you want to add to so I can just click and drag and get some more and if you want to subtract from your selection just hold down the alt key and you can see you've got the minus sign within your brush shape and if you let go of the, of the alt key it'll show the plus sign within to show that you are on add selection it actually does this it shows the plus sign when you're on new selection also which is kind of a pain because you might think that you're on add selection when you're actually not and you'd click up here thinking you're adding but it actually does new selection so that's a bit of a little bit problem but kind of minor the next option in the option bar here is your brush size and you can see right now I have 125 and using the left and right bracket keys you can add or subtract from that you can also do this down arrow to get some more options you can change your diameter you can change your hardness down to zero or 100 percent spacing will set the flow of the brush so that when uh, this is high it will make a spot where you first click and then when you move it will jump to a new area and put another spot just like this. Uh, again with the hardness 100% is the hardest and 0% is a soft brush. Angle and roundness you really only see you can see in this little box here. Angle you really only see when your roundness is less than 100%. You can either adjust that by scrubbing along here or you can actually click on the point and make the shape you want. With the angle, you can either hold down on the arrow or you can scrub up here. So then you got kind of a calligraphy brush here. At the bottom here you have size for pen pressure, so if you have a tablet you can adjust the uh, size of the brush based on how hard you're pushing on your tablet. Or you can use off or stylus wheel. But in reality, none of this really does much of a change except for the diameter so you might as well just keep this at 0 and 100 percent and keep your hardness all the way up because and definitely keep your spacing all the way down but adjust your diameter as needed if you're in a tight spot it can help a little bit so if I'm selecting up here and I want to get in tight little spot here you can do that next you have the sample all layers selection box and right now I'm working on a flattened image so this isn't really going to affect anything but if you do have multiple layers like say I'll just brush on something real quick 
So if you have multiple layers with something drawn on the top, and this is just an example, if I have sample all layers off and I'm just selecting through, it will it won't take into account this white. But if I do have it turned on and I go into the white, it'll take into account this whole shape. So that's a handy way if you're working on a lot of layers and you want to select exactly what it looks like on your screen. Generally speaking, I keep it shut off. The auto enhance checkbox here smooths out rough lines, but it can definitely slow down Photoshop. You can actually get better enhancement through the Refine Edge dialog box, which I'll talk about in another video. So, generally speaking, keep Auto Enhance shut off. For the most part, I'm not really happy with this tool. It is okay if you're selecting a lot of, of the same color and luminance area. Uh, it does definitely go quickly, but it usually adds in a lot of stuff that you don't want, like this tree here. So, generally speaking, I don't even use it.